The title of the message is How to Get Ready for the Coming of the Lord. Now, I bet that title got you all excited about getting ready for the soon coming of Jesus. That's what we're going to talk about. How to prepare. How to get ready so that we will be in that perfect place when Jesus comes. So, today I'm going to share a little bit with you about getting ready for His coming. Yes, indeed, the rapture of the church is the next thing on God's calendar. The rapture of the church is when Jesus himself will descend in the clouds and appear and take the dead in Christ and those of us who are alive at that time, he will take us and gather us together so that we will be with him forever. The rapture of the church differs from the second coming of Jesus in that the rapture occurs when Jesus appears and takes the dead in Christ and those of us alive at the time. He will take us to be with him unlike the second coming when he comes physically to earth. There are two different events. And the rapture of the church is the next event. Oh, hallelujah. And praise and thank the Lord forever. I want to read to you now one of the famous rapture scriptures. I just love it. It's 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, and we're going to begin reading in verse 16. The Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, and with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet call of God, the dead in Christ will rise first, and after that, we, that's you and me, if you have called upon the name of the Lord, we who are alive and remain, we will be caught up together with the dead in Christ, and will meet the Lord in the air, and so be with him forever. Oh, hallelujah. I can hardly wait. I know that you are eagerly looking forward to this too. Oh, yes. And the sooner it gets, oh my goodness, the more exciting it is. Oh, yes. And this is that time in history unlike any other because it is so very close at hand. We are considering the question in this series of how to get ready for the soon coming of the Lord. How do we ourselves get ready? How do we prepare ourselves and what do we do for the kingdom? Firstly, we do so by living by the Spirit and not the flesh. I want to go now to the book of Galatians. The book of Galatians chapter 5, we're going to begin reading with verse 22. 
I'm quite sure you'll recognize this scripture as speaking about the fruit of the Spirit. But we're going to continue through verse 26. Verse 22, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the sinful nature with its passions and desires. And since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking and envying each other. But this exhortation of Paul's to the Galatians, this exhortation is indeed to live as being sensitive to the Holy Spirit and being led by Him, putting down the flesh at every opportunity. In other words, we're to live being sensitive to the Spirit and not to the ways of the flesh or the ways of the world. As we look to the Lord as that one who's taken on our sin and died in our place, as we look to Him for salvation and for the infilling of the precious Holy Spirit, He makes possible for us to live by the Spirit, having a victorious lifestyle, a victorious lifestyle through being sensitive to and led by the Holy Spirit, who is the Spirit of love and of power and of wisdom. Praise God and hallelujah for these wonderful attributes of the precious, precious Holy Spirit who longs to fill you and me. Oh, Holy Spirit, come in now and fill me with your fullness. Amen. If you prayed that, let me tell you, He did that. Oh, yes, He did. Now, we're going to go to uh, yet another scripture here. And uh, now we're going to go to the book of Philippians. And we're going to chapter 2, verses 3 and 4. All right. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humility consider others better than yourselves. And each of you should look not only to your own interest, but also to the interest of others. In other words, live the love life. <laughs> Live the love life, putting the interest of others before your own interest, being sensitive to and led by the Holy Spirit. And as you are, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of love, will lead you in just this way. Oh yes, so many times, the Holy Spirit will be leading me to do something that I may not want to do at all. And yet, He'll so quicken me that I will have a very sure knowing this is His will because it will be in the interest of someone else and not myself. So, live your life in such a way that you are sensitive to and obedient to the Holy Spirit because He is 
faithful to lead you in just this way. So, you'll actually live your life esteeming others, exhorting others, and building them up. Now, another point here as we are considering how to get ready for the coming of Jesus, another point is this. Flow in the God kind of love. Flow in God's love. The God kind of love. Naturally, we are going to 1 Corinthians chapter 13, the love chapter. I'm going to read about the God kind of love. This is sacrificial love. This is the kind of love that uh, works out so that you are living a life esteeming others as better than yourself, putting the needs of others before your own, literally living a life of sacrifice in obedience to the Holy Spirit. 1 Corinthians 13 verses 4 through 8. Love is patient. How patient are you? Mm. Be patient. Uh, love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It is not rude. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrong. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, and always perseveres. Love never fails. Ah, oh, these are some of my favorite scriptures. Oh my, how often we use these when we are officiating in weddings. We oftentimes will go to 1 Corinthians chapter 13, the love chapter. It's so descriptive of the God kind of love and it really does tell us how to live our lives esteeming others as better than ourselves. Yes, it does. It's powerful, I'm telling you, this God kind of love. Now, another point, remember, we're thinking about how to get ready for the soon coming of Jesus. And I want to say now, yet another thing that we should be doing is this. We should pray. Oh, yes, pray without ceasing. Yes, that's right. We should pray always at all times. That's right. First Thessalonians 5, 17. Um, it says, in fact, let's back up to 16. Be joyful always. Pray continually and give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Yes, it is His will for us that we pray at all times, in all manners of prayer. I want to go now to yet another one of my favorite scriptures, all oh, Ephesians 6. 18. In fact, I was reading this scripture, this very scripture, when the Holy Spirit himself spoke to me and filled me. Yes, this was uh, a precious moment um, of my life as the Holy Spirit showed me that to pray at all times in all manners of prayer that I had to be completely dependent upon Him, at which point I asked Him to fill my life, to come in and fill my life to overflowing. And in just a minute, we're going to pray and 
He is going to do that for you. I speak that prophetically because it shall be done. Amen. But now, Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 18. Oh yes, I just love it. Pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. And with this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the saints. A real strong command. Pray in the Spirit at all times in all manners of prayer. While we are in Ephesians chapter 6, I want to go now to verse, um, oh, excuse me, we, we just did read uh, Ephesians 6, 18 and verse 19 now does say, pray for me, this is Paul's exhortation. Whenever I open my mouth that words may be given, that I might fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel. So we're to pray at all times, in all manners of prayer, and pray for others, particularly those in ministry who have the commission to proclaim the gospel. Now, let's do it. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you for sending Jesus and Lord Jesus. I thank you for coming and taking on my sin that I might put my faith in you as being the sacrifice for my sin. Lord, I give you my heart right now, and I ask, Holy Spirit, that you fill my heart and life with your precious, precious Holy Spirit. Come in, Holy Spirit. Fill me. Fill my heart. Fill my life. Fill me to overflowing. Holy Spirit, do it. Lead me. Prompt me. Guide me to pray, and also to lift up others in prayer. In Jesus' name, amen.